Hello there. Kyle Katarn here, and it is Wednesday, my droids. Welcome to Comics with Katarn. Uh, this is both a live reading and a reaction video, because I haven't read these comics before. They are brand new, and I do love me some Star Wars comics. Uh, we've got two titles today. We've got Bounty Hunters, issue number 27, and then we have the fifth and final issue of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Very excited for both of these today. Uh, but first, Bounty Hunters by Ethan Sachs and Paolo Villanelli. Havoc at the Accretion Disco. Oh, geez, we're going to a disco? Nice. Tazu Leech, looming large. Kind of made of smoke here. I dig it. RC, Mr. Napcakes, hello there. Thank you for joining me. It's a pretty slender DH-17 she's got there. It's almost different enough that I would call it a different model. Like it's a DH-16? Who knows? Reeling from her team's failed mission against Crimson Dawn, Ta'anga is in desperate need of credits to keep her crew together. With open bounties few and far between, she may have no choice but to accept an offer of employment from the woman who defeated her, the diabolical Kira. To avoid that fate, however, she may be putting the team in even more peril. Valance is also treading on unstable ground, handpicked by Darth Vader to lead an elite team ferreting out Crimson Dawn moles within the Imperial military. He may have started out serving the Empire against his will, but despite his pro protestations, the mantle is starting to grow disturbingly comfortable. Star Wars Bounty Hunters Havoc at the Accretion Disco, Part 1 Valance finds himself settling back into his old ways, huh? Well, he thinks that now. Just wait till he finds out the fate of his loved ones on that planet, which is being kept from him. Intel that the Imperials don't want him to know. The Edgehawk. Fett! No, 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 no. Oh, she has nightmares about Boba Fett shooting her in the belly still. Just another dream. Pull yourself together, Ta'anga. Sorry if I woke you again. Losha? She's gone. Where'd she go? Losha, is everything all right? No, but when I get my hands around Vukora's throat, it will be. Just doing some chin-ups of rage right now. Yeah, a very, very interesting thing went down between the two of them in the last issue, where Vukora basically just, like, turned into a frightened little girl as soon as she hurt, uh, she wounded the animal. Like, completely, like, triggered some sort of repressed trauma in her own childhood and, like, completely changed her personality in that moment. I wonder what their next encounter is going to be like. <laughs> He's just snoring. Oh, God. What does a Trandoshan snoring sound like? Is it like... <laughs> That's what I've decided it sounds like. <laughs> Maybe you can make this galaxy a little better, after all and earn some credits in the process. Keep those bounty hunters happy enough to not eventually stab you in the back. Just think about it, but not too long. Ah, friend to Onga, you're just in time to hear Tasu regale Zuckus with a story from his days in the fighting pit. Yet another story from his days in the fighting pit. <laughs> it was bitterly cold that day, so the warmth of my enemy's arterial spray felt good on my face. <laughs> I want to hear this story. All those people in the audience screaming and fainting. You would think they'd never seen someone being disemboweled before. <laughs> as much as I hate to interrupt, Zuckus, how far are we from our destination? I don't want to be late for our rendezvous. We need those credits. We are almost there. Zuckus had to drop us out of hyperspace early, for obvious reasons. Do we need those credits that much? I mean, working for the Pikes is as likely to put a knife on your back as money in your pocket. Maybe we should just consider the Crimson Dawn offer. Absolutely not. Did you forget they sent Dengar to kill us? Plenty of Pikes have tried and succeeded to kill my people over the years. What was that? 
I said, can you at least tell us what the job is? Interesting that he would, like, keep that to himself and say it in Jablogian and not in basic. That, like, that's a very valid point, Tasulich. You should be bringing that up, and Ta'anga might actually take that on board. <sighs> What's Tasu whining about now? Just in time for a quick mission brief, Bosk. Some pike gangster hired out the accretion disco to celebrate a big win over a rival. Only the rivals are not taking the loss very well. The mission is simple. Keep this pike and his entourage alive while they're celebrating. No bounty hunter gig is that simple. Ugh, my stomach feels strange. Like something is pulling on it. Zuckus suspects he knows why. We are here. The accretion disco, orbiting the stray black hole. What? It's a fucking disco party? Orbiting a black hole on an orbital? Oh my goodness, this is so cool. All right, my next birthday better be uh, better be on a venue of at least this level of magnitude or I'm not going to be happy. <laughs> Way to set yourself up for ultimate disappointment there, Kyle. Good job. It, this is a very cool visual, though. It's so it's so colorful, and the way the black hurl is just like black hurl, black hole is swirling with like these different like vibrant streaks of gold and like vermilion and pink. It, this this is almost like a visual out of Guardians of the Galaxy. You know what I mean? Star Wars has every right to be that colorful, especially in the comics. But that is like the next thing that jumps to my mind looking at this. Nap kicks, I know, right? It's incredible. Should be called the Vortex Club. I like that. That'd be a good name for it, too. Club Black Hole. Well, actually, no. That's a very different kind of club. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, 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 I see. This is a... Nice. This is a big old page. We are here. You're late. And you have the nerve to bring that fighting pit trash with you? This trash may be your boss's best shot at living through the night. Whatever. Come with me and keep and earn your keep, Slimos. Heh, <laughs> Slimos. I don't like that this comics reader has to manually resize pages every time. Come on. The Righteous Fist, Imperial Star Destroyer. What? Can't you see I'm drinking? Pardon the intrusion, Baylord Valance, but it doesn't seem like you are drinking at all. More like collecting alcohol. <laughs> He's got like four drinks in front of him. What's going on here? My internal filters break down the alcohol before I can feel anything. And I don't have human taste buds anymore anyway, so what's the point in drinking? I would suggest you come up with a better line for that officer who purchased the beverage for you. And I quote, the cute one over there. Oh, someone's buying him a drink? Good for you, Valance. Ooh, I wonder what uh, ulterior motive this, this gal has. Cute. Ah, Bylord Valance, I presume. I have read the mission brief about your rescue of those Imperial engineers. Quite riveting reading. I am General Bordeaux, though you probably have heard of me as the hero of Hoth. No? Well, I served under General Veers that day, but it was my assault on the rear blast doors that tipped the battle and earned me an overdue promotion. Anyway, it's not every day you meet another hero of the Empire. To meet another soul who appreciates that the only path to success is to throw oneself into danger, to take action before the opportunity dissipates. Take action before... There's no need to get... There's no need to get up. At ease, soldier. But, but I haven't gotten to tell you about my stratagems on Hoth yet. Get out of here, nerd. This is one hero of the Empire who doesn't want to chit-chat. So did he pick up Valance's drink? He's not holding a drink here. He totally picks one up off of Valance's table. That's hilarious. <laughs> also, um, not really a Veer's appearance, but we get a Veer's mention, so that's pretty cool. What do you want? The briefing about the next mission isn't until the next cycle. I, uh, gave some thought to what you said. About how I could find my place here. With you. 
I'm not good at speaking from the heart, even back when I had an actual heart. Before Vader cut mine out of my chest and put a processor in its place. No, that didn't come out right. I guess what I'm saying is... I'd like to get a... I'd like to get a chance to know you... <laughs> Will you please just stop talking? Oh, jeez. Oh, romance. Look at Valance. This is gonna extra complicate things in his brain when he finds out that the love of his life has been murdered. Like, and now he's gonna feel like he's been unfaithful, like, on top of that. Damn. Also, like, good for Valance. Our boy is finally getting some. And you know what? That's fine. And she's kind of cyborg, too. She's got the cybernetic eye, so, like, they're perfect for each other, man. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the party. Oh, this is pretty sweet. Not bad, huh? My boss, the great Omel Sampak, rented the whole place out to celebrate a major victory over his rivals. Of course, those who survived the attack may not be feeling as festive. That's why you are here, to keep any party crashers from ruining the mood. Why not pick a place that's a little more defensible? They're like yelling over the music. <laughs> this is quite the party. We got a bunch of pikes just like going ham out here. Obviously, our, our crew. Looks like it's mostly pikes and then silhouetted other aliens. A couple of humans. What's up with this guy? This guy seems kind of shady. Because Omel likes the view. Not bad, right? The club's thrusters keep the station just outside the event horizon of the Crusade black hole. Close enough, though, that you can feel an exhilarating tingle when you dance. Or so I'm told. I do not dance. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the background, is all... <laughs> Rhythm of the night. Oh, nice. Fuck yeah. Look at the, look at the DJ. <laughs> oh, for a second, I thought that they were actually having a moment on the dance floor, but no, she's just remembering. Remembering happier times. So, where's this Omel? In the VIP section, naturally. He is a very important pike, deserving of all the pleasures his credits afford. Look at this guy living it up. This filth is who you send to guard me? A pleasure to meet you, too. But, sir, they were the only crew desperate enough to take such a job on such short notice. And what about this one? He looks like you could be a Narkonji assassin. Ugh, don't touch me. He sure sounds like one of those scum with that accent. Tasu isn't a Kanji assassin. But those party crashers over there definitely are. Death to the Pikes! I knew it. I spotted them in that crowd. Bosk, get us some cover. Sure, make Bosk do all the heavy lifting. Better leave someone for me. Get down, Pike. Zuckus, 4LOM, take out the upper level. I don't want them getting into a position above us. Pew, pew. This unit will provide you sufficient cover. Zuckus appreciates you, my friend, but senses those assassins probably do not. I think the thing that the, the Bounty Hunters comic has done the most for me personally as a fan is uh, give me a greater appreciation for Zuckus as a character because he's amazing. <laughs> I said someone for me, not many for me, Tonga. <laughs> nice. Look at the detailing on this, uh, the Relby V10. I love it when they pay attention and give him, give Bosk like the right rifle. Just keep him busy while Tazu and I get Omel to safety. That, that's a solid idea. <laughs> Come on, you lowbred scum. You heard your boss. Get me to safety. Careful. You don't want to see what I'm like when I'm in a bad mood. Yeah, get some, Tazu. Losha, we don't need to keep doing this. We can go back to the moisture farm and... You know, you don't need to keep coddling me. I can hold my own. I can be just as tough a bounty hunter as... Da! Losha! 
Oh, she, her gun got sliced. Oof! Should have kept your eyes open, bounty hunter scum. I was gonna suggest the same thing. Because if your eyes were open, then you would have noticed my droid friend with the big rifle pointed at you. Teamwork. You put up a good fight, but you are too weak to survive against a trained Narkanji assassin. Ah! Uh, I am not weak! Psh, I am not weak! You can stop! He's dead already. Hitting a corpse is not gonna bring the Nexu back. I'm. I'm alright. Man, that's sad. God damn it. Yeah, I, I cannot blame Losha one bit for being, like, a mess after losing a pet Nexu. I would be beside myself. It's alright if you're not alright. I, I couldn't stop her. I wasn't strong enough to fight Vukora on my own. My sweet Tuka, you're not on your own. We will face everything together from now on. It's gonna be a long time before Losha's better from this. And that starts with these kanji slugs. Tazu, 4LOM, clear the path. Oh, Tazu, 4LOM, clear the path. Take the client to the safe room. I wonder how many innocent partygoers have died by this point. It looks clear behind us. Seems like it's far less safe right in front of you, kid. No, please don't hurt me. I have credits. Lots of credits. <laughs> You, Atazu Leech, I recognize your fighting style. We both hail from Narkanji. You should be joining us, not debasing yourself with the Pikes. I don't fight for the Pikes. I fight for my crew, for my friends. Those basic speaking misfits are not your true friends. They will turn on you, eventually they always do. Do you know why we are here to kill that Pike? He ordered the bombing of one of our fight schools. Students, while they slept. Is that honor? What kind of friends would make you take the side of a monster just for money? Your real friends will be waiting when you realize where you truly belong. Interesting. Okay, so this is going to be kind of a crisis of conscience for Tazu. Oh, Tazu, don't do anything stupid. I feel like he's going to botch the job now. You really stepped up there. Maybe you're not as useless as I first thought. Soon. Tazu, all clear. The pikes are mopping up the last of the assassins on the dance floor. You can bring out Omel now so we can collect... What we're owed? Oh no. Good thing they paid us a down payment in advance, huh? Tazu, you didn't... No! Oh no. Oh my god, it's Kanja Club. <laughs> Love it, that's amazing. Tazu, what have you done? Tazu, you're officially the new, uh... You're the new Nakano Lash. It's it's like Bounty Hunters issue number one all over again. Oh no. Well, this is gonna have some pretty big ripples, I think. Can't wait to see what happens in part two. Oh my god, look at this cover. Okay, okay, so we're all gonna go, I mean, like, as soon as we saw that the orbital station was on the edge of a black hole, like, I think we all knew that the station was going into the black hole by the end of the story, right? Like, <laughs> it looks like that's happening for sure in the next issue. I can't wait. That was cool. That was good. And, yeah, Doc, Doc, exactly. An emotional beat following a disco firefight, like, showing that Star Wars can do both at once. Awesome. Okay, and now... Switching gears. Star Wars Obi-Wan. This has been a really fun story, and I really didn't know what to expect from it going in. I thought that it was going to be... Because w w we were first told about, like, the, the old Ben perspective, and then it was just going to be him, you know, writing his journals in the hut, in the Jundlin Wastes. Um, and it, and it, for, I, it, it feels stupid to me now, looking back. Like, of course, we're going to get this treasure trove of, like, prequel stories and all these random different anthologies as he's telling them. But at the time, I thought it was just going to be a series about old Ben in his shack, and I was like, what's going to happen here? But now I feel like a fool, and I really have enjoyed this series. This is the fifth and final issue, so let's take a look. Yes, I love this, like, just out of middle age 
like they've, they've blended the faces together. He's got the gray hair and the short hair, but you can still see like a little bit of Ewan in the face and Alec Guinness in the face. And also, Sand Trooper riding a dewback. You gotta love that. As he awaits an inevitable storm in the remote deserts of Tatooine, Obi-Wan takes time to reflect on and record key moments of a heroic life long lived. Star Wars Obi-Wan Ben by Christopher Cantwell, Adriana Melo Interesting, it's just called Ben. The storm has passed, but it remains difficult to discern what is truly clear. Four ration containers are missing. Another storm raid from the Tusken Raiders. I'll inform the commander. Sir, Tusken Raiders have hit our ration stores again. During the storm, just like last time. Curse those vandals! Take a full squad into the wastes, retrieve our supplies, and I want their whole thieving clan exterminated. Sir? Kill them! Do you have a problem with that order, JM-909? Negative, sir. It's just that it could invite retaliation from other groups in the area. Perhaps you prefer internment, then? Or hard labor? Negative, sir. I serve the Empire. Not one of them will be left alive. That's better. There's a scarcity of us in this dust ball, and we must hold it. Be efficient, like when we put down one of those spent dewbacks. One bolt between dull and hollow eyes with very little brain for that blast to pass through. Yes, sir. Damn. Just like full-blown imperial arrogance and xenophobia right here. Power is in limited supply in these parts. This is an amazing panel. These Imperial, these Stormtrooper Knights, I will call them, as they're mounted on these dewbacks, riding into the wastes. Yeah, do, you're basically Dr. Holocron. Space Nazis, and sometimes it's less apparent, but right here it's on full display. I need new power cells for my lantern and other, other appliances. I must trade with the Jawas due west before they depart the area. Best to travel at night in the coolness of the dark. And let my senses guide me. Ah, oh, beautiful. This panel is amazing, and this one is just full-blown Alec Guinness. Look at that face. Plenty of terrors abound in this hour, of course. So I keep my saber close. Kind of showing a little bit of the progression, like... He kept that thing buried in the desert. He was terrified to be even, like, seen near one. But he has self-actualized after the, after the events of the Kenobi series, and now he keeps his saber on him because he knows what it means to be a Jedi, and he's no longer ashamed of that in any way, you know? There was shame involved, I think, in burying his saber. But he owns it now, you know? Like he says in Twin Sun, Look what I have risen above, you know? Plenty of terrors abound at this hour, of course, so I keep my saber close. For among these physical terrors also exist the malicious specters of fear and desperation. Okay, so they are sending out just regular TKs and then three mounted units. I hear they pray to the sand. I heard they eat their own, the weaker ones. I hear they're dead already, condemned to walk the desert as ghosts. They're all speculating about Tusken Raiders. See, and, like, and that plays into the fact that they're able to do these things and they're able to have so much hatred of the other because they don't know. They've never interacted with the Tuscan in a way that wasn't them executing them for like a perceived crime. So why would they have that level of humanity? They've never experienced that. Oh, geez. These, I love these long panels. They don't cooperate well with my, with my reader, but beautiful. I hear they pray to the sand. I heard they eat their own, the weaker ones. I heard they're dead already, condemned to walk the desert as ghosts. No. They live just like you and I out here, by tooth and nail, just trying to survive. And that makes them scary enough. I think the sergeant is who is scary here, because you're like, acknowledging the fact that they're individuals, and yet you're still down to just murder them. 
And that makes you scary enough, honestly. Tense. Five, six raiders. One sentry. And I see two massives. I see the containers. Banthas? Must have sent them into the inner canyon for the night. I want two with ND-221 to flank from the north. Two with EQ-005 to flank from the south. I'll go in from the middle as the tip of the spear. Hold your fire until you hear my command on the comm. Let's move out. I'm almost in range. Snipers, take the massives first. Roger that. Then down on a target carrying ranged weaponry. The rest of you focus on interior soft targets. Yes, sir. I'm on the sentry in five, four, and silent on comms. Fire! No, the massives! Huh? What? Also, nice E-22, my dude. I like that. Love that for you. Is it a dummy? Have they been tricked? Orders? JM, do you copy? Stand by. Target is a decoy. Repeat. Same here. Two more in the south end. It's a... Nice! Up there! Fucking eat shit, stormtroopers! We're pinned down! Eat some gaffy stick. Ah, oh, yes. This is amazing. Wait! <laughs> Brutal. Just caved his face right in. The echo of Imperial Blastus. The screams of Tuscan Raiders. Then all was quiet. I quickly sought shelter along the canyon walls and was lucky enough to find some. As only moments later, I heard the Bantha calls, and I saw them go in single file to hide their numbers. Look at these badasses right here. Really makes me think of the, the episode of the Book of Boba Fett where we got to see him Boba train up a group of Tuskins, learn how to use the speeders so they could take out that train of pikes. God, that was such a cool sequence. And when I witnessed the blaster rifles in their hands, I knew who had been victorious in the skirmish. I was a general. I am a Jedi Master. I am the sworn protector of a child. Some have even called me a legend in my time. But I am not above the necessity of scavenging. On Tatooine, one must do all they can in order to survive. Besides, Jawas would gouge me for power cells of Imperial quality. <laughs> it's true, we've seen it happen. The ration containers were empty, of course. The Tuskens had stolen them from the outpost, but they'd also wanted more. They knew the theft would draw the outpost's ire, and then they'd get to have some stormtrooper rifles, too. That had been their plan all along. Brilliant. Yeah, the Tuskens are smarter than anyone gives them credit for, man. I had seen dead stormtroopers before. But every time, I could not help but be reminded of my clone comrades who also died in vain long ago. Oh. <laughs> man, that really changes it like of course of course that's what he would be thinking of seeing like white plasteel armor on the ground like how can you not think of the fallen clones <coughs> trap a conscript far removed from the likes of the clones but just as abused by the larger galactic controversy my master taught me to provide help, render aid, protect life, preserve it. That is a Jedi's purpose. A purpose that supersedes all, ideo all other ideologies and allegiances. Look at this shot of the starry night sky. That's one thing you gotta imagine is that on Tatooine at night, the stars must be beautiful because it, the population centers are so spread out that there's like virtually no light pollution whatsoever, so you would get these beautiful vistas like this. <coughs> Almost home. What is your name? Shoo. <sighs> Oof. Just 
trying to run for it. You're hurt. You will not survive out here on your own. Look at this panel right here. The twin sons, Obi-Wan, like the most wizard-like we've ever seen him with the light just like pouring in over his shoulder and then this like poor pathetic trooper just on the ground. And we don't even see his face because Obi-Wan is speaking to him a universal truth and he's just, it doesn't matter who he is that's delivering this message. This is like, to this guy who's like barely conscious too, he probably can't even properly see him. So this is like a good idea of what he sees. Yeah, this is, this is dope. Oh, fuck. Of all the things he could have seen. No. What? A sorcerer, devil. Uh, he just faints. He can't handle it. Almost home. <laughs> Obi-Wan's like, I've been called worse by uh, crazy monsters and mechanical warriors. So I'll take it. In sleep. The past and future run together, blending into a lifetime of impulses, intentions, and outcomes. The full tapestry of my experiences is filled with moments I could have never predicted. Hello there. <laughs> Three days have passed, but you are healing well. Your chest plate took the brunt of the blast. The bigger concern was the blow to the head. Tell me, how do you feel? Look at this guy. He looks so lost and confused. He's like, uh, um, uh. <laughs> yeah, Doc, he said it. Hello there. Damn, Obi-Wan. That's ballsy. He just, like, put it on display. He's got a little, like, he's got little display hooks for it. You know, he wanted to make sure the trooper saw it at this, at this moment. I, I am fine. What is your name? JM909. No, your real name. Perhaps Jim, then. I'm Ben. Nice. Reminds me a lot of FN becoming Finn. And as soon as as soon as the trooper said his designation in the beginning of the issue and said JM, I actually thought to myself, I was like, I've never seen JM before. I wonder if that's on purpose. And it totally is so they could make him Jim. I get it now. Perhaps Jim, then. I'm Ben. Really, dude? Really, Jim? Come on, man. I'm not your friend, Ben. Take it, if you'd like. These deserts can be quite unkind to one without the proper tools. Damn, he's so zen about it. He's just like, you can't hurt me with that. It's a gift. It's yours. Go ahead. Take it. He just drops it and runs. All of us grope in the dark, looking for light to guide us. Hoping something will illuminate the correct path we should take. But we honestly never know e where even our chosen path will take us. I'm sorry, sir. Six troops lost! No supplies recovered! This is your failure, not mine! Uh, yes, sir. I will inform command about this. Now clean yourself up and get to the armory at once. You look like some wretched must I sleep beggar. Ben. This uh this reminds me a lot of uh the honorable ones, the episode of Rebels where Callus and Zeb are stranded on that planet, and at the end, when Callus is finally rescued, he's kind of just sort of like sitting there in his very dark private quarters, thinking about the fact that he did not receive the same warm welcome that the rebels did. The storm has passed, but I know another lay on the horizon. I feel that my time here may be drawing to an end. For these long and desolate years, I have often felt alone, but truthfully, I never have been. Jesus. Oh, the way they frame this last part, all with Vader's glowing saber. This is a poignant emotional beat, even if it just stopped right here. But then, and because the Force is my guide, I never will be. For none of us is alone, even in our darkest hour. The end. 
this was such a good conclusion. Oh, man. Awesome. I love the fact that Obi-Wan took the Stormtrooper in, and then instead of just having, like, some nice little wholesome la-di-da, I'm going to join the Rebellion now. He runs from Obi-Wan. He goes back, and he doesn't tell what he saw, because that was a personal interaction between these two. It wasn't a Jedi and a Stormtrooper. It was two human beings, you know, one just, like, saving the other, nursing him back to health, and then fully giving him the freedom to make his own choice. He wasn't like, you. the Empire is evil and you must join with me in the Rebellion. He was just like, yeah, you can take the lightsaber if you want. I mean, you know aggression or harm. And I think that and like he was able to successfully get that across and so this guy decided to just run. And this Stormtrooper sergeant in the very beginning was saying like, I believe in the Empire. I will kill anyone who opposes it. And he was a hard believer. And Obi-Wan took this hard, devout believer and completely changed completely changed his philosophy or at the very least effectively sowed the seeds of doubt because even here in his dusty little shack in the middle of the Jundland wastes he's still the negotiator and he still has the power to influence people's minds not with the force but with the power of conversation you know and through just acts of kindness and that's why Obi-Wan really was like the epitome of what it means to be a light side Jedi Knight and uh, just the fact that we end it with these three panels right here, what what a knife twist this is. Yeah, this has been excellent. I've really enjoyed the Obi-Wan uh, series here. Fifth and final issue. That was great. We hope you enjoyed Obi-Wan's past adventures. Check out some more Tales from the Galaxy Far Away. Read it. About to read it. Haven't read it yet. Just read it. Oh, God, the Mandalorian cover. I love that one so much. And Han Solo and Chewbacca number six. Oh, shit. He's locked up with Ponda Baba and Dr. Evazan. That's not going to go well for anybody. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for reading the comics with me today. Um, these were excellent. Really, uh, we got some treats today with Bounty Hunters issue number 27 and Obi-Wan Kenobi's fifth and final issue. Uh, thank you for watching. If you did not catch the beginning of the stream when I read Bounty Hunters 27, don't worry. You'll be able to catch the replay on YouTube momentarily here. Um, thanks again. And as always... May the force be with you.